something that was true and now we're kind of updating it. So you got to be real careful about that like that 24.81 number I give you. That's not the sample mean or anything. That's just a number that I'm going to compare my sample to. So my claim, we believe that the mean age at time of birth for women has increased from 24.81. So the number that will never ever freaking show up here is the sample number. Because in real life, we do this step before we take a sample. Does that make sense? I'm not going to go talk to people before I have an idea of what the hell I'm looking for. I'm going to say, I'm curious about this. Now let me go talk to people. So what's the claim in math? Mu is greater than. It's increased. It's the claim. Greater than. <laughs> so extreme reactions. <laughs> now, now, now. So you can always find the claim. Now you step back. The claim is not always H1 or HO. It's just whichever one it belongs in. We know the HO needs to have an equal sign. That statement does not have an equal sign. So it must be the H1. So what's the HO? <laughs> Alright guys, hopefully we can handle that way of saying things. Yes? Let's have constructive comments. There's some playfulness in there, it's fine, but what the hell. Uh, how many tail tests will this be? In fact, which side would the tail be on? Yeah, greater than, so it's up. I like it. So when that H1 has an inequality symbol, it's pointing you in the direction of the tail, just like it pointed you in the direction of shade back in algebra. What? All right, so what two things do I need to address on the second step? Is it normal? Yes, because what? I like it. And then secondly, so that tells me I can do something in stats one. So secondly, which one, Z or T and why? Z? Sigma is known. 
Theta is angle. Oh, boy. Cosine theta. I like you just throwing out all kinds of Greek letters. Greek letters, no. Omega. Iota. Alright, guys. So, this phrase, I didn't mean to spring it on you out of nowhere, so that means alpha. The level of significance. The smaller alpha is, the more significant it is that I pass the test, because that makes the target smaller and smaller and smaller. That's why they call it the level of significance. So I know it's a one tail test, I know the tail is up here. I know I can use Z scores and alpha is 0.01. So now I just look up T chart. One tail, 0.01. Go all the way up. 2.326. If you use 2.33, you're fine. 2.326 is just a little more precise. So I say this in words, if my Z star is bigger, 2326. So if it isn't, we would say we fail to reject the hell, we fail to support the hell. What's the how are we doing so far? Good? Alright, so what do we know about the sample? We know that N is 264, we know that X bar is 25.29, sigma is, so the one for groups will be square root of, what was it, 264, 2.85 divided by square root of 264, 0.1, 5, thank you. I think that sounds familiar. Most of you have that. And now I can make Z star, Z score, or, or Z score. There it is. Z star will be my data point, 25.29, minus what we're assuming the mean to be, 24.81, divided by the new standard deviation. Do it again. 2.74? Yeah. Okay. So when you look up the p value, a lot of you guys, you got to be careful. This is why it's good to have a visual. The area in the tail of 2.74 should be really small. It's a tiny little thing. So when you get 0.9 something or other, you didn't do. Yeah, so it'd be 1 minus 0.9. So you, for the p value, you get. 0.0031. That is the probability that if the mean is in the right place, that I would pick a sample that far away. So hopefully it's obvious that what's more likely is that the mean is in the wrong place. That's why we can reject the null. Hello. So 2.74 definitely made it into the rejection region, which just means it was far enough away from the middle to say that the middle is not in the right place. So which one was my claim, the HO or the H1? H1. So then I want to use this language. So we have found sufficient evidence. We have found sufficient evidence. Two. Support the claim. Come to you. That what? Yeah, the mean age at first birth has increased. Woo! So when you go to write this, you just can copy right back from the claim from the paragraph that described the problem. You can just copy it right down. It's incredible. Give me something physical about what the problem is doing in the real world. All right. So any questions on that first one there? All right, let's do the, the other one. The other one's a little bit freaky. Wow. 
So again, the average debt was 906 bucks, and this is true. So you can tell where you stand. I lived a very plastic life through graduate school. So it took me a while, not only did I have to pay my student loans back, I also had to pay my credit card off. Oh yeah. So, um, we believe that debt has stayed the same. Now, now I appreciate that somebody pointed this out, and, and, and this is a really good thing to point out. The mean they found was 882.34, so why would they stay with their claim? Because whatever the mean is of the population, any sample I pick is going to have a different mean than that. Isn't that true? I mean, just about. It's going to be, I would, I would put money on that being true. So the fact that it's different from 906 is not enough evidence. I have to do this whole thing to see how far away is enough evidence and then see if it got far enough away. So just because it's not 906, that's not good enough. I need stronger evidence. Because every sample means it's going to have a little fluctuation in it away from the real mean. Um, so what is the claim here then? The mean is equal to what it used to be. I like it. So that's what I want you to understand. That's why I put a little place for the claim. If you write that, now step back. Does that have an equal sign in it? So much so. So which one has got to be the over the high? It's got to be the oh, that, That's the one that's got the equal sign. So what's this one going to be? Not equal to. To tell you honestly, I don't know if it's going to confuse you or not. The, the symbol used to be this that we used. It used to be this. Math people, we don't really like multiple symbols in a row. So we kind of cut it out. But why does that actually make a little more sense? Because that means you can go either way. That's why it's a two-tailed test. To show evidence, I can go higher or lower. So guys, real quick, I just want to point something out. What do we believe? We believe it stayed the same. So do we want to find evidence if that's us? Do we want to find evidence that is not 906? No, I, I don't want to, but... Again, we do the analysis, and then if it comes out that we find evidence at 8906, we go, oh, shit, I was wrong. Okay. Basically, it's a summary of a lot of journal articles. Oh, shit, we were wrong. Um, do I use Z scores, T scores, or nothing? What are the two things we got to look at? Yeah, N is 81 bigger than 30, so it's normal. Why is it right? And I only know, what do I know? I know S, not sigma. Oh, I'm screwed. So then I have to use T scores. T scores were invented to cover our ass for when we don't know sigma, when we only have S. S is just an estimate for sigma. T scores. So what I say here, I said alpha is 0 0.02. Let's go. One, it's a two-tailed test. What's the degrees of freedom? Yeah, 80. So what do you get when you look up? Two-tail, 0 0.02. Stop at 80. I get 2374. That's what most of you guys got. So it's got to be negative 2374 and positive 2374. Real quick, why was that so easy? Why didn't you have to look up two different things? Because the normal curve is symmetric. symmetric. We will have another curve in the future that is not symmetric, so we will have to actually look up both sides of the thing. Oh, that sounds like so much fun, Jeff. Yes. Yes. It's called chi-square distribution. Always reminds me of Jagger. How do I say this? If T star is less than negative 2374, or T star is greater than positive 2374, we can reject the null. Support the high. So basically, if I get into the rejection region, always if I'm far away from the middle, so greater than positive, less than negative, away from the middle. Okay, cool. 
I don't know if you noticed on the board, I heard a few of you guys murmuring about, and this is what the T score does the exact same job that the Z score does. So the formula is exactly the freaking same, it just has S sub X bar in it instead of sigma sub X bar. It's the exact same formula. So what was my N81? What's my X bar? $882.34. What was my S? 107.95. So yes, I must change that because that's the one for individuals. I need the standard deviation for groups of 81. So what do you get there? 11.99? Yes. Nita. Right, how are we doing so far? Is that, you must always change. I don't care what kind of standard deviation that is. It is for individuals. I have to change it into the one that works for groups of size, whatever. And now I calculate my T star, my data point, 882.34. Minus the mean we're assuming, 906, divided by the new standard deviation. Negative 1.97, I like it. I didn't ask for a p-value here because t-scores, they're not easy to get p-values for by hand. And you have this old school instructor that likes to do things by hand, so, oh well. But I can still answer the problem. Did we make it far enough away? No. no. Please, your guy, what's in the middle? Zero. Zero. Where's negative 197? Zero. Not quite out that far. So we did not make it. Uh huh. So right here I can say we fail to reject. No. Fail to support the high. All right, let me stop again here. So again, this step sets up what far enough away is. This step, we see how far away we got. Fail to reject the host, so we fail to support the hive. If I can't say the first guy's wrong, I can't say the second guy's right. So, how do I word my conclusion? Did we succeed or fail? We have, we have. So we have not found. Sufficient evidence to do what? What's which one was my claim? Yeah, my, my claim was the hope, so I gotta use this language. I desperately want to continue to remind you guys. There's no ambiguity, no vagueness about what words to use. Whatever your claim was, that's the words to use. So we have not found sufficient evidence to reject the claim. That what? That the dentist gave the same. Or you could say the debt is 906. There's a lot of different ways to word that, like I said earlier. And they all mean the same thing. Yes, ma'am? Does it work if uh, I said we have found sufficient evidence to support the claim that average college debt of students has stayed the same? Or do we need to say we have not found sufficient evidence? So there's no question that we didn't find evidence because we didn't make it into the rejection region. So we didn't find evidence. We failed to find evidence. We didn't make it far enough to show that something's changed. So we failed to find evidence. Is that cool? Yeah. But... Well, I was just saying because we found evidence, like we did that process <coughs> and that showed that Oh, I see. Yeah, so the semantics so. is important. I can't say that the that we show that the mean is 906. I cannot say that. I can't say that. Semantics is important. I can never prove that the mean equals something using a sample. Because whatever the real mean is, the sample mean is almost definitely going to be not that. <laughs> so I can't use a sample to prove the mean is something. We can never support the null hypothesis. Right? We can never do that. We either reject it or we fail to reject it. That's it. I like him there, I remember. And the and the high, we either support it 
or we fail to support it. That's the only option. <coughs> like it. So yeah, I, I, if I am the person that made this claim, I feel good because the test I did did not find evidence to reject my claim. I feel good. I'm like, oh good, my claim seems to be okay because this test didn't just... Now somebody else, somewhere else could do another test and actually find evidence that I'm wrong. That's why we can't say that it is 906 because I ran one test. Any scientific, and believe it or not, this is science. This is the fundamental science of math. Any scientific experiment you do doesn't by itself prove anything. Somebody else could do another test. In fact, we got pretty far down. Then we get, we, that's pretty far down. It just it, it happened to not be quite far enough, but that is still pretty far down. So maybe somebody else picks a sample and they definitely get in there. So the whole re repetition, the whole repeating an outcome that you see in science also has to happen for statistics for it to be approved, for it to be seen as being correct. All right. Okay, so last little thing. Any, any questions on this here? All right, last little thing, and then we'll head out. And I told you I was going to tell you about error. Where are we at? Okay, should be enough time. talk about error, I like to bring in a problem that's less mathematical. But the idea of it stays the same. So if I'm a, a medic on the battlefield somewhere, right? Like a real battlefield or a fake one. If you play a lot of video games. Um, and I go out and I go out in the field and I'm trying to see who to try to help. If somebody's not alive anymore, what am I going to do with them? Move to the next person, right? It's like, I'm sorry, but you're gone. Move. If somebody's still alive, I'm going to try to help them. So, so when I go out there, my null hypothesis, what I'm trying to find evidence of when I come up to somebody is to see if they're alive, right? If I don't find evidence that they're alive, then I move on to the next person. Does that kind of make sense? All right. All uh, right. So, what do you think my null hypothesis would be when I'm coming up to somebody? And this, you could look at this two different ways, but personally, sorry? Yeah, that you could say that, but I would say that my null should be that they're alive. If my null is that they're dead, I'm like, I'm, why did I waste any time? So I'm trying to show evidence that it, they are alive, I'm trying to show evidence that, or see that they're dead. And so you could do it either way, really. So let's just say the null is that the, uh, the patient is alive. So my alternate hypothesis is the patient is dead. Now let's say I do my analysis, I check for a pulse, hopefully not with my thumb, right? Because then I feel myself, I, 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 let's see if they're breathing, I check all these signs to see if they're alive. Um, and I come out and I reject the null. Which means what? It means that I think what? <laughs> I think they're dead, right? So then I'm going to do what? Yeah, I'm going to move on. So what mistake could I make? What mistake could I have made? I think they're dead, but really, they're not dead. And they're like, so this gets a little morbid. <laughs> Hopefully they hear that or they see the tear coming out or something. Um, I think they're dead. So the, the error, this is a type 1 error is what I could have possibly made. A type 1 error is when I reject a true null. So I rejected the null, but in fact they were alive. So that would be a type 1 error. So that's when you reject 
a true null. So if the null is actually true, but we found evidence to reject it, that's a type 1 error. Now, well, and that's bad because the poor person needs help, and I thought they were dead, so I moved on to the next person. All right. I like it. I'm sorry. Some of you guys look sad. Don't worry. They came back. They said, oh, shit. Um, now, what if I fail to reject the null? What does that mean? If I fail to reject the null, that means I think that the patient is alive. I fail to say that they're dead. So I, I think they're alive. So I, uh, I think they're alive. So the type of error I could have made, amazingly enough, what do you think it might be? Holy shit. All right, so yeah, the type of error I might have made here, because the math people were very, very, very creative. It's type 2 error. We even kept this Roman thing going. Which is where I fail to reject a false. So if I think they're alive, but they're actually dead, because I, I checked their pulse with my thumb, so I felt my own pulse. I thought I saw breath when actually it was just a piece of uh, some wind coming. Whatever. I saw their, their chest move up and down when really it was just the explosion made the ground go. I don't know. Something. I'm trying to give this doctor some, you know, excuses. Um, so this would be I fail to reject a false. No. So that would mean think they're alive. I start to work on them, but they're already gone, and, and that would be bad. What's that? What's that? All right, you guys get the idea? So to me, the way I remember this is the type 1 error is the shorter phrase. Reject the truth. The type 2 error is fail to reject the false. So I always remember the type 1 error is the shorter phrase. I'm not that concerned, honestly, that you remember which is which. I'm more concerned that you're aware of the fact that there are these two kinds of errors we can make. And just to kind of close the loop on this, alpha is the probability of a type 1 error. So if the type 1 error is worse than the type 2 error, I'm going to make alpha small because I can control that. But it, kind of, it should make sense that the smaller I make this error's probability, that must mean this error becomes bigger. A bigger probability. There's always that give and take. So that's why alpha has all these different values, because it depends on how bad a type 1 error is. If a type 1 error is we all blow up and die, I'm going to make alpha pretty damn... Well, we'll see. So it all depends on what the severity of the error would be. So that's the, that, the, that, uh, the error idea is in that second section in the homework. I think after that we've covered almost everything. So all we got to do after this is talk about hypotheses tests for percentages. And then we'll be basically done with Chapter 9. Holy shit. And one thing real quick, for those of you who are in the, uh, the English section, if you're working on some statistical analysis and you want some help, you can obviously come to me.